What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Highly Compulsive Reaction. We're going to be jumping in the next one on our Blackpink journey. This one's coming at us via donation from Tyler. Tyler, much, much love to you. This is Rosé with the Zach Sang Show talking about on the ground our Blackpink and Hank. Let's jump into this. The last interview we did was very, very informative. Uh, so I'm assuming this one is going to be too. Let's take, let's sit back and let's take a ride. It's about 32 minutes. So buckle up, sit here. Let's check it out together. Let's go. Hello, beautiful human. Hello. I am so excited because we back, are about to catch human. up with Rose. She has a solo project out now. If you haven't heard it, there's a link in the description below. We've Please For leave sure. your honest feedback in the comment it. section below. Also, like the video and I'm begging you to subscribe because without that subscription, we can't get started with this right away. Blinks. I appreciate you guys for being here. Welcome back. I am sorry about the delayed welcome. Did not forget about you. Let's get back into it. We can't keep doing what we do. So please, we beg you for your support. And I promise I'll keep feeding you. Okay. Feed. Rosé. Let's do this. Let's do it. Hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan. And we welcome Rosé. Hey. Hi. Hello, beautiful. Hey. Good to be back. I am so excited to be talking to you. There is a, a lot to discuss here, including uh, a solo project. A project that I remember very vividly, maybe, I don't know, I, I've lost track of time. Three or four years ago, you were on this couch and, 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 and slightly teased. Like, like the slightest, tiniest little bit you fed us. Um, how long have you been working on this? Oh, well, um, I think... We could say like longest three years. Like the first song that I recorded on my own, and we kind of Whoa, kind of marked it years. as oh, this could be potentially Rosie's solo song was like three years ago. So quite a long time ago. Wow, that is a long time to release your first solo out. Like, and that's on top of the other time that they've already spent with. Black wow, my goodness, it's a long time. Work on a solo. I guess if you gotta make it perfect though. Practice, practice, practice. Get it all right first. Make sure everything is in line and knock it out of the park. That's what she did. So you've been working on your story through music for three years now. And when you first listen to a song, like, how do you listen? Like, and this could be a song for you or Blackpink. How, how do you hear it? What do you listen for? Uh, well, first of all, I think I literally try to um, kind of uh, make a blank kind of like a blank page and I'm just like yep I'm a blank canvas and I'm just waiting for it to kind of speak to me definitely wow. um there's just always that moment where you're like yep this is perfect everything's amazing we have to work on this one uh what do I look at I think I kind of go for a lot of like uh, like lyric wise if it kind of speaks to mm. me that's important and if, if it's important. a song that doesn't have lyrics yet then it's like it's just any type of melody that kind of um kind of like Brings really draws you emotion. in like first impression just everything if it like if it looks like me or sounds like me then i'm like yep on the ground has all of that right i mean like yeah, right does. out the gate when you first hear it is it like meant for you yeah, I, I mean, I didn't even know. Like, so it was a, it wasn't even pitched for like just me. It was just a song that came through, and we were like listening to like it was a very rough draft. But I was like, um, I liked it, and um, it's got a great I think message. My producer too. We were just like, oh my god, this is so cool. I mean, the sound was really cool and everything. So, uh, actually, yeah, of course, this song was like a song that we talked about, like we heard it once and we talked about it again and like like i don't know like it was just like in an instant it was like yep this is going to be the song and i remember just like we we re we like kind of finished off recording it um did some did some retouches but then like we were already having a music video meeting like next day i remember and it was like crazy oh that's fast dan loves the music video well there's so many hidden things in the music video and I was tr watching it like 30 times last night trying to find all the little hidden Easter eggs or secrets you may have hidden in there. Yeah. So the question I had first is like, you write Rosé on the mirror, then it switches to your real name, Roseanne. What's the meaning mm -hmm. behind that scene? Um, oh, he found so some real... I'm going to have to go back and go look for Easter like, eggs. Uh, me to kind of act out like maybe like an old version of me and have um, the younger... like 
you know, past version of me write rosé on the, um, on the mirror and he wanted, um, so it'd be kind of like the past me looking into the future, writing my the future pastor. stage name Rosé. Reaching for that. And then and my then... future self to yeah. be writing my old name, Roseanne. That's so it's kind of weird because cool. when that you're totally younger, you it. look into your future like, oh my God, when I grow up, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And then for me, now that I'm like, you know, working and I'm, you know, being, um, trying to be an adult and everything a uh, funny thing <laughs> i think i Me tend too. to look back on my older days and there are a lot of um traits about me back then which i admire now i'm like wow back then i was like this i was this kind of a person i was very driven like you know i had the wildest dreams and like and i and i like aspired to be myself that i was in the old days you know Makes i don't know that's sense. like i think that's pretty ironic and i think he tried to portray that it's one of the greatest things about that particular song for me is that it tells that message. That message that a lot of celebrities go through and a lot of famous people go through where they, they strive so hard to get to the top. And in doing so, a lot of them forget about the things that, that, they, re that they already have that they should be thankful for. The, the family, the friends, the, the memories, the... Like, all of them are focused on getting big, getting famous. And then, and it happens to quite a few artists, actors, any kind of celebrity, when they let that, when they let that fame drive them and they want to get there and they want to make it big and they're on that grind, it's easy to forget about the other things. It's easy to forget about the important things. And then when you get up to the top and you have everything that you ever wanted, you start realizing, that, hey, all of the important stuff that I actually needed, I already had when I was back down there at the bottom. Like, it's very, very, it's a tough circle that celebrities have to go through. And it really does, it takes some serious discipline to not fall into that, that same circle, that same trap. Which I like. But also really special, right? Like, like as you progress in life, you've realized the qualities from your past that you want to keep with you, that you want to maximize on and expand upon. But I'm sure at the same time, you've left things in the past too that I maybe you didn't want to guy. carry he with tells, you, right? Yeah, some of the of course, definitely. Questions. You learn from your mistakes and then you grow up. But I don't know. For me, I don't know if it's the same with anyone. Of course, I, every day I'm like, oh my god. Um, I learned from my mistakes and I am growing as a person, you but there to. is a lot of me that was like, if somebody asked me to be a trainee again and do all that I did, you know, when I was in my like teenage years, uh, like if they tell me to do that again, I'm like, I, I can't do it. I don't know how I did it. So it's like, I don't blame you yeah. at all. That's you like people wouldn't asking do it again if I would go back to you don't know camp. how you were able know. to conquer it, but really the truth is you had something inside of you the whole time, right? This, this unwavering, this constant dedication and focus and desire that's the thing like the, that's like the whole point of the song i think is like i think nowadays i'm like oh my god like i'm trying to look for like like what is my main purpose in life and what am i looking for what am i doing all this for every day i wake up like work from like you know morning to like you know sunrise to like sunset and i'm like like what am i doing it for and then you think like it was all in me, like everything. I'm trying to look outwards, like what am I doing this for? Like, um, what am I trying to achieve? I'm trying to look outwards, but basically I have to look inwards because that, like you said, that old version of me is already me. And so I'm just kind of like trying to check back into who I am as a person, what I value the most. That is a most. very cute so shirt. that's one of my questions that I had I've here. I've never seen like, a shirt like what that before. It, like, it, the, the concept is always about like, what you really need is on the ground. So what... Do you genuinely need to get by Rosé? Like, what is Friends, happiness family. to you, essentially? So that's what I'm saying, as in, um, if I think about it, like, on the ground, like, there's so many ways to interpret that, right? Like, yeah. Like, when a plane lifts off, you're, like, on the ground, and it lifts off, and you need to be on the ground for it to, you know, kind of, like, speed up to, you know, fly. And so, like, everything we need is, like, built in us, like... As in, when I was um, a trainee, I think my family meant to me the most. So they were my biggest happiness. Um, my love for music was most important. I didn't care about what other people thought. 
it was just about me enjoying it like oh my god i'm just I, like i love singing like in this tiny room like for like seven eight hours because i just enjoy it but like you know as soon as you start to get things out of it that's when you start not enjoying it and i feel like just checking back into those things like fam like family yep. um uh like just like my love for music oh. it's just like really simple it's not even that big no but but it's those simple things that result in the biggest impacts 100 percent right? and like the concept of like one day you could sing in a room by yourself alone and mm -hmm. love every second of it and then the next day you're singing because you have to sing because it's yeah. work to sing yeah. and it does yeah. change a little bit should never be that way though right and that's why yeah. I think this is, I hope that this is a song that kind of reminds us that, you know, you just got to stick to what you actually, like, started these things for. And, and by the way, like, I think every, like, that is a reminder for everybody. Um, yeah, truly. well, it kind of seems like you're saying, you know, you worked your whole life to become Rosé the superstar, but sometimes you kind of miss the life that you were living before. Of course. Yeah, but I mean, of course, people are like, they think like it's all about like me, like saying I'm such a big person now. And like now I'm like, but that's not really it. Negative. It's just that's about I where I'm from that song at, at all. as an adult. Like, I feel like now I like I feel a little more confident in my skin than I used to be. And like, I'm like kind of starting to work and kind of enjoy it a little more. And like just me with where I am as an like adult um whilst i'm doing that i'm also looking for like purpose in life and like like mm -hmm. where i'm at what i'm doing this for like what does this all mean just like i think everybody could relate to it so I, like i really hope that people don't take this in as like oh rosie's singing about how amazing she is like or, or like where she is and like how successful she is but like that's not really it. it's just talking about my stage in life how i have worked my whole life to get to my dreams I'm like, you know, I'm like just every day I'm like going there, but it's like, wait, hold on. Let's not always look forward. Let's always also look back at who I am as a person and kind of, you know, take care of the things that actually mean true. to me. I don't understand how anybody could look at on the ground and think that it was Rose trying to drop a flex track at all. It was, that's exactly what it was. It was her talking about, hey, trying to achieve your dreams. And there's nothing wrong with that. It was about how she was trying to achieve her dreams, but then she had to also keep herself grounded and remind herself that, hey, let's not forget about the important stuff down here. And sometimes you don't realize that important stuff down there is there or how much it means until you've already made it to your dreams. What did you learn from your time with BP that set you up perfectly to release this solo project? Oh, uh, that's a really good question because I have been talking about how um, this whole solo project has kind of brought me to realize how much I actually have learned as Blackpink. Um, I'm actually really, if I was to do this all by myself since day one, then I would not be able to do it, like handling everything, just knowing how everything's working. But like, just like the whole, like, you know, with Blackpink, we've worked so many hours, like straight on. They so, started like, off as little that, girls like, and now they're professional. Keep up with everything that's happening. Um, just like the whole process of releasing music. I've done that like so many times with my members so that like I'm experienced. But back then I had my fellow like teammates to kind of rely on. And so I kind of, you know, I learned through that process. So now that Absolutely. I'm by myself doing it, I'm much more comfortable and I know what's going to come. So I feel like, <laughs> yeah. It's special. It, it's special having one, that experience, but two, they must mean something to you throughout this process, right? Whether it be security or just ears that are willing to listen? Yes, definitely. Um, it's just like, I definitely feel like it's like I'm not doing this alone. They're there when I need them. And that I, I just, like, They yeah. have to be. It's like Think family. about how long they've been together. So you just know it's that your family's family is always going to be there, you know, no matter what. It's like. Hey, beautiful human, I gotta hit pause real quick to tell you about my favorite, native deodorant. I'm obsessed. One, because it's made with things that I understand. Tapioca starch, shea butter, coconut oil, but it also works. It's also vegan, never tested on animals. Very well. And native has figured out a way to make deodorant come to you plastic-free. It's pretty freaking amazing. And there's a scents that are guaranteed to make your nose dance. 
My favorite right now is cucumber and mint. Uh, this one right here is citrus and herbal musk. It is very delicious. Uh, I also I a don't big think it's coconut probably delicious, and vanilla guy. Might smell good, but I don't it. think it's delicious. If you want to try out native deodorant, you can do it right now. Get 20% off. Just go to nativedeo.com slash Zach. That is nativedeo.com slash Zach. Oh, and by the way, there's no risk to try right now. You'll get free returns, exchanges, all within 30 days. And there's like so many five-star reviews. Nativedeo.com slash Zach. Try it out. Nativedeo.com slash Zach. I promise you'll like it. What's go been try the it biggest out, but don't challenge eat it, folks. so far that you found releasing a solo project and doing it by yourself? First of all, like the responsibility. Like back then, like, not back then, like with my members, <laughs> it would be all four of us. Like, like you know, I, it's like a quarter of it. We get to share the responsibility. Like everything we do is, you know, like I have a lot of like a big audience. Um, that is kind of tuning into every single thing that I do. And I do want to be yep. a great role every model for all my single um, listeners out thing. there. And so it's like the responsibility, I would say. Um, it's all on me. So it's like it makes everything a little more like i got to be a bit more careful. Um, and maybe just like the amount of work that is put in. Like <laughs> I've learned to appreciate like how much my members, you know, were very um, helpful in that way because we would <laughs> kind of, like I would kind of take care of this, she would take care of that. When I'm like a little tired, like somebody else would be like kind of checking in on this and that. But now, like it's all on me. They, everybody's coming to me to check. There's Jersey. no more dividing it up this? amongst and, like, four people. I have people. to look at every single thing. So it's just like a bit more of work, but you know, it's also very enjoyable. It is freeing, but also scary because you the, the the burden of responsibility is on you. It's it's all you. There's no other. There's no three other shades of colors. You know painting this photo definitely so like everybody rocks up on set um to work for me and so it's like kind of like on me for everything to be doing perfect well if you get what i'm saying like everybody yeah. kind of here for me and so i'm like i'm i gotta like be on my best you know behavior every day i gotta be like up and ready to you know you gotta be the driving force i'm like ah but i mean it's it's very it's like a lot of fun because everybody cares about me a lot and they're all taking care of each other that's one of the things that I've learned, like throughout working for many different companies, throughout trying to do my own business. You got to be the driving force behind your success. You can't let anybody else determine when, where, if you're ever going to be successful. That has to be you. That has to be you 100%. You got to be the one that gets up off the couch. You got to be the one that I say it all the time. If you want something different from life, you got to do something that you've never done before. If you keep playing the same game, you're going to keep winning the same prizes. Change the game up. Gone is the other song on, on R, and it's very emotional, very powerful, and it's about loss. So when you first digest that song, is it hard to listen to, or what is it? Like, what, what goes through your head? Oh, it's like a very vulnerable moment, I would say. I remember recording it first, and I, w I felt very, like, relieved. It's yeah, like, a lot of artists have said that. I don't that. know, like, I felt like, like I had finally, finally get it spoken. Out. Like, I don't know, it was like, this song really spoke a lot of, like, just, like, things that happen in life. And you're like, oh my god, this thing song is just like... Like, maybe it's like a letter that you never sent to someone, and you feel like you finally mm. got it to them. Do you know what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah, it's kind of 100%. Like, yeah, and I feel like I wrote it in the, like, sometimes when you're writing letters, you, like, write it, and you're like, oh, that doesn't sound like anything that I wanted to, like, it to sound like, but it, you, let's say you finally get to your final draft of, draft of the letter, and it sounds, like, exactly like you want it to sound, and how they would want, like, how I would want that person to read it. It's, like, kind yeah. of like that, maybe. Yeah. It's the letter you're nervous to send, right? But you hit send, right? You did it. <laughs> Actually, as soon as I finished recording, I was like, send. Let's send it. <laughs> I'm ready to release it. And that was two years ago. <laughs> two wow. years ago, yeah. So That's when a long you send process. That song That's dial up internet. To the lyrics and you make the story your own, do you apply real life to it? Like, do you think who in your head deserves that letter? From your past? But I mean, the funny thing is, I don't think I have to think of a person. I think, it, like, it's funny, but I think of myself. 
<laughs> like maybe that's kind of weird, but like I I think of myself in a moment where I would really want to say something to somebody, um, and I would try to reenact a moment in my life where I felt really like, let's say, heartbroken or just like where I feel very vulnerable. She's very like, very. I well think I try to tune to into myself. that voice of myself, because like you know you have several voices in your head. There are some voices that are like you know that kind of try to like be like hey come on like i'm i'm cheering I'm in for the dark you. place here like oh, help me out ones. and then there's a voice like go rosie like yeah, in my head there's one that cheers right? for you and, and there's, there's that bad voice it's like you know help me out i'm suffering i'm in a lot of pain and you know uh, i'm not okay um i think it's that voice that i try to kind of bring out in me um and i and i try to tune into that um and try to be as honest as i can like it's almost okay. like acting for me like i don't want to like i don't want to be that person who just kind of like forces an emotion i just oh, want it to be another version of myself totally get it <laughs> thank you for sharing that because the truth is like it is a you know yeah it's a very honest very vulnerable song to share with the world and uh yeah uh i mean dude searching for something but can't feel nothing it's a beautiful record thank you so much when you're lot. going through a lot who do you reach out to talk to? Because, you know, everybody goes through things, but the not girls, many people can relate sure. to being in one of, like, the biggest groups in the world having a lot of eyes on them and having a lot of pressure in that way. Oh, who do I turn to? There are very few people that I turn to, to be honest. Like, I can't say that I have, like, a lot of people. Um, I think as I am kind of, like, maturing, I, I'm starting to notice that it only comes down to a very few people um, that includes my family and um, just out of all honesty like uh, so like my producer Teddy uh, he our, like he's he kind of supports us in so many ways and he's very like experienced in this um, industry and everything so he's a very good support and help as a friend and as like kind of like a mentor I would say um, so there are those very few, f and then I noticed there are always those very few friends who call you in like the right moment. Like, let's say mm. I was fine all year. I'm those like, are the friends I was like that the happiest want. person. And then there's just this one moment where I'm just like, like, without much reason. Like, I don't think there has to be a lot of reason for it, but like, there's there are just those moments where you just kind of like lost. And like, mm -hmm. I I find like I have like a few of these moments where I like let's say like crying like sitting on my bed like crying like oh my gosh I don't know where I'm at and then you get a call from that friend and you and then she's like what's up and you're like oh my gosh you called it the um, perfect time I'm crying is what's up <laughs> and it's like and then you laugh about it and you're like oh my god that's like crazy because that's when the friend kind of wakes you up like oh you're doing fine you know like let me tell mm -hmm. you like out of all honesty and there are those people who just know what to say in the right moment and just just know when to call when you need them, which is crazy. And that's like the universe. And I think it also always comes down to quality over quantity every time. 100%. It, it's, it's, quality it's not over about having quantity. an army of people just ready to tell you whatever they think you need to hear. Yeah. Um, it's about having a few. And professionally and personally, like, Teddy is a, must be an amazing guy. I mean... Like, that human being has made more history and created more incredible records. Yeah, no I mean, it's kidding. really, it's pretty astronomical. Um, so you must learn a lot. I mean, every day, right? From somebody like that? Yeah, but the, the most important thing is he knows how to be a great friend um, to us. It's too. so cool that they're so That's like the biggest part, with biggest Teddy. support. Um, always very grateful, yeah, to have a friend like that around us. Wow, we've covered He's a lot here, good care but we haven't him. talked yet about Hank, your dog. Hank, <laughs> I would have loved to have him here to, with me today, which I sometimes do, but today he was like passed out, so I kind of left him to sleep. By the way, my dog Lou is doing the same thing this morning, and I didn't want to uh, disturb him, so I said, have the house. You deserve it. Have the house. That's kind of cool. <laughs> How did Hank enter your life? Why was now the time for a dog? I don't know. I was always kind of, I wanted a dog for a long time, but I didn't want to just, like, kind of decide on it too quick, just feel it, just because I wanted one. I just wanted it to be in the right moment. Think about but, it, um, ponder on it a bit. It's smart. 
I kind of felt like, uh, yeah, I don't know why. It was just like, I was like, yep, I, I really want a dog, but I want to do it in the right way. So I did a lot of research before I did it. I'm sure a lot of people do that. Like, you know, like you start researching, watching so many videos about dogs. And you're like, I think I'm ready. <laughs> Funniest thing, first day he comes, I don't know what to do. I'm like, oh. and like, Hank's like, I'm scared of you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know. Why do I feel like, you know, I'm so like, un educated about it when i feel like i've studied for like the past month about dogs it's like way, trying to make a new friend i think that is like, yeah it's it's that is being a parent or having a responsibility like like a, a responsibility that is a thing that is in addition to yourself do you know what i mean like whether that be a kid or a cat or a dog like this thing doesn't have thumbs you are <laughs> hang's thumbs like he needs you for everything i know and it's like and like every day i'm like oh my god is this what i'll be like when i have a child <laughs> <laughs> it's the, weirdest the, answer thing. Is, the answer is could be but also like hank prepares you for that moment you know yeah i know i'm like oh my god i feel like i've already had a son so it's like next time like bring it on it's yeah, so weird it on, i shouldn't be talking about having children right now <laughs> but i don't know why it's like will i be like this when i have my first child <laughs> it's weird yeah. By the way, I think the same thing all the time. And my friends will see me interact with my dog and let, let, let I'll let my dog run me, you know? Like, I spoil him. He walks me. I don't walk him. And my, my friends are nervous for what a human child will be like that I help create. So, so true, so uh, true. I'm like, and I talk to him like, oh, what's that? And I feel like, baby, I love you so much. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and people are going to think I'm the weirdest person. And, and the funny thing is, like, um, I always look at my dog and I'm like, he's such a genius. Like, I think he's a genius. Like, he's. <laughs> And yes. everybody's like, all he my did was like sit smart. down and like <laughs> hand. That's your, that's all he did. And what do you mean he's a genius? I am also convinced that my dog is the smartest dog, and he 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 can understand me. He understands words, and if he only had thumbs, he'd be able to r r run my the world. Cats understand I'm English and Thai. So true. I totally uh, understand what that feels like. But, but by the way, like, see, this is a part of it. Like, don't you want to be your kid's biggest fan? You are Hank's biggest fan. Um, well, if I remember correctly, your dad wanted you out of the house at a certain point because you sang too much. But I'm assuming he's still your biggest fan. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope that is the case. Well, at least you, have, you probably I'm have sure Alice, you case. know, your sister. and you, you have, you Yeah. Have but, but you want to be your but, kid's biggest fan, right? Like your mom. I know. But then, like, now, like recently I've, I've had a lot of work and so my mom had um has been taking care of hank a lot and so nowadays i think he kind of likes my mom a bit more and which like it actually <laughs> it breaks my heart i feel like so down when my dog kind of like wags his tail towards my mom and he kind of like ignores me i'm like ouch like uh, did you really i feel just heartbroken like, like i think i could record a song right now i'll be like bring it on all the sad songs <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, ah. Like, Where did ah. this emotion come from? My dog left me for my mom. <laughs> so, like, oh my god, it breaks my heart the most these days. Oh, this is When great. he <laughs> likes my mom over me, I'm like, but the truth is, when you're back in his life, there's nothing like your smell. My dog lived with my parents for two months, and when he saw me again, he like he, he freaked out. He peed himself. He was so excited. They never forget. That's what genius is doing. No matter how long you're yeah. gone. Um, genius, <laughs> come on, right there. geniuses pee themselves. <laughs> But yeah, he uh, freaked out. So there's nothing like your smell. Don't worry. He'll come back to you. Hank, Hank will always love you. I hope so. Thank you for saying that. Rose, I have a question. When you're working yeah. on your solo project, do you commit 100% of your focus to the solo music? Or do you split the time between solo and Blackpink projects? For us, I think we try to work on one project at a time. Like when it's like just maybe about when it's like releasing and when we're preparing up for it. Um, that's why we kind of put a hundred percent percent on every project, and so as soon mm -hmm. as it's kind of like, um, so like as soon as this kind of is like now out there and it's doing its thing, I guess we'll like slowly start doing like the next project that is planned for us. Um, yeah. That's doing cool. Its thing. You're uh, what are you no number one on the Billboard Global 200? Congrats on that. Thank you so much. It's an incredible record, truly. On the Ground is a reminder record for me. I listen to it every day because it's just something that I need to, you know. It in, keeps me humble. work and life, it's really good to be reminded that, like, 
you strive for all this stuff, but the truth is happiness and fulfillment. It's all around you right now. Known. You just gotta it's what you've find always it. had in your life. You just gotta like realize that it's there. Money and material things, they don't fill holes, you know? Family, Definitely. friends, my dog Lou, you know? Yeah. You know? Well, talking about that, can you talk about the lyric, I used to have a hole in the wall with a mattress? The funny thing is I kind of had a crack in my wall. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember I had this, like, not, like, I wasn't actually literally saying I had a hole in the wall with a mattress, like, uh, but I mean, it's like, it's just kind of trying to, like, describe how I started from somewhere, someplace very, very humble. I totally um, can understand And now that. I am kind Living of running Asia? towards my yeah. dreams I know about the holes and, in a wall with a mattress. Um, just talking about how far I've come, uh. But I, did, I would like to mention, I did have a crack in my wall. I remember it started, <laughs> like at first it was not, it was like a clean wall. Um, I remember there was like a, I, I don't know how you guys call it in the States, but like we call it a boiler. Like, um, it oh was, yeah, like a water, water heater. heater. Yeah, yeah, a water heater, okay. Um, and that like, it was really hot, I remember, because I used to like my room really warm, and like we'd always turn it on, and then like, it was right behind my wall, I think, my room wall, and I think it started like melting the wall because <laughs> I, I don't know. And then the wall started breaking, and then later on, like it literally started opening. And so basically, I kind of did. Was this when you were a trainee, or is this back in Australia? Back in Australia, but I mean, I, I honestly didn't write it like according to my actual like experience. But now that okay. we mention it, I did kind of have a crack in my. I Highly combustible lives in a hole in a wall with a mattress. That's just a little one. Like your whole house is just the one room. Like over there's my bed, over there's my kitchen, over there's for the bathroom. Like it's very, very small. It's very, very humble living. And a lot of people over here and a lot of people start that way. A lot of people have to build their way up. But especially with on the ground, like that's one of those things that reminds you that that hole in a wall with a mattress is the place that you started. And the people that were around you and the memories that you made are j just as important as anything that you're going to do when you become a celebrity. Australia. But I mean, I, I honestly didn't write it Remember like, where you came from. to my actual like experience. But now that okay. we mention it, I did kind of have a crack <laughs> in my I had a crack in my wall, not a hole in my wall. But yeah. <laughs> How have you grown as a human and as an artist after releasing these two records that are a part of our? Oh, I mean... I'm still growing from it, I would say. Like you said, you listen to it every day. Me too, I listen to it every day because it's my job right now. But <laughs> I find myself, like, let's say I feel like something hasn't, like, worked out, like, completely, like, I would like it to, like, you know, turn out as, or something it's not, like, looking the way I want it to be. And then I'd be pretty down, let's say. I'd be down, and then I'm like, come on. This is the song I have. I should be living by it. You know, I should be that role model living by my song. <laughs> but... You know, I'm having to check in with myself. Good on like, you. Wake up, you know. I remember, like, my friend telling me, like, Hey, listen to your song. <laughs> like, you know, cheer up, Rosie. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, yeah. You know, so I'm learning from it myself, too. Is R a continuing story? Like, will you add to this project as time goes on? Or is R finished with these two songs? Oh, that's something I'm gonna have to see in the future, but I did start, um, I tried try to start it on a note where I is kind of like a representation of like the first, um, alphabet in the name that a lot of people call me by, which is Rosie, Roseanne, Rose. And oh. so it's supposed to be like the start of it, like the first alphabet. It does not mean, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna have an O S E. <laughs> I'm just a bit apostrophe thing, but it does re represent that. So, um, I mean, I'll have to see. Um, that's kind of what the future holds. The different letters in your name. So, wow. Yeah. That's really creative. I like that a lot. Yeah. Do, that's actually do you, really most cool. Most people call you Rosie because I did notice you keep calling yourself Rosie. Did I just say that? Okay, yeah. Um, my friends and family call me Rosie. Okay, that makes sense. Sorry. I mean, I'm supposed to stick with the name Rosie, but it comes out. <laughs> well, no, I was watching other interviews Don't before in this trouble. to see like, what else you've been talking about, and I noticed that you refer to yourself as Rosie, so I didn't know if you just felt more comfortable with that name. Or if that's yeah, just the I'm... name you grew up with. Yeah, Rosie's more of like a casual name that my friends and family, like people who are personal to me, call me. So like... Like, sometimes maybe I do refer to myself, like, I go, Rosie, yeah, like, it, it'd be, like, something, like, 
if my mom would call me like Rosie, like my friends would be like Rosie, members would be like Rosie. Hank would call you Rosie. Yeah, he'd be like Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> or mom. Me, Hank would definitely call her Rosie. Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> my call. Yeah. R is the two song project right now. It mm-hmm. on the ground. John Bellion is a writer on this record. He is one of the. He he is an artist has changed my life in such profound ways. He. he the, the partnership there on that song is really extraordinary and it makes me very happy. If you haven't heard it, which I'm sure you have, but please listen to it. We're going to get a link in the description below. Gone is the second song. And I, I hope there's more of your story, Jose, that comes out. And me too. You, Seriously, uh, it's you know, a story that share more records definitely that needs make to up, be told. You know, your, in the future? Uh, your, yeah, in the future. Yeah. Yay, thank you. I mean, um, I hope everybody looks forward to it now that the first um version of my like you know debut is out but um yeah i hope so too um i'm excited i'm definitely excited to see how this goes from here on the ground and gone so good so good uh yeah thanks for hanging out and thanks for talking to us about all of it i really really appreciate your time and energy today thank you uh this was a very nice chat for me today. <laughs> You're amazing. Thank you so much. You are amazing. Thank you. I appreciate Both you, amazing. Rose. Thank See ya. Bye. Say hi to Hang for us, please. I definitely will. Um, and I can't wait to be back on your show with whatever we're coming out with next. Please, anytime. You have an open door policy here. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to support On the Ground. And yeah, thank you, thank you for giving us energy. I, I forever appreciate you very much. No, thank you very much. Oh, peace and love. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Hey, beautiful human, thanks for watching our full interview. But Absolutely. I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got Eclipse Channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please, That's subscribe. That's a smart idea. And uh, notifications. Zach's saying you're a genius. And all that stuff. Okay, cool. Even though you might eat deodorant. You. Don't eat deodorant. It's not delicious. Blinks, that was a great interview. I really, really do appreciate you bringing this one to me. We learned a lot about Rosé. We learned a lot about her whole debut and things like that with her solo project. Uh, if you, Thanks for being here, 100%. If you made it this far, 100%. Nothing but love to you. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Check out one of my other videos up here. Subscribe right down here if you want to see more content, possibly your content. Until the next one, I'm highly combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. I love you to the moon and back. Peace.